Hello there, Dirk here. Welcome back to World of Warship Legends on the Series X. Today we have another new ship to talk about, the Tier 7 Premium Friesland. She's Dutch or Pan-European, however you want to slice it, and is touted as the gunboatiest destroyer yet to make it into Legends. Why? Well, because she doesn't have any torpedoes. So, what else does the Friesland have to offer? Let's find out. The Friesland is absolutely unique, and as a part of this campaign, the element of choice, it will be one of two destroyers that you could choose at the end of the campaign. The other one is the Lo Yang, of which we had a video that I will link in the description below. I think the Friesland will be picked over the Lo Yang by a lot. I think a lot more players are going to pick the Friesland because of how unique it is and different. It comes from the PC with a pretty sinister reputation, and it has an insatiable desire for damage. Before we go any further though, let's look at the commander, who is quite obviously Mr. Yerzy Swarski, the leader of the Jersey Boys, with his backup vocalists Billy Sims and Vinny Mordoff. More on those inspirations later, but real quickly, let's turn our attention to what is happening on the screen because it's about to be an epic screw up. <laughs> this game might be an example of what not to do, and I might call it a beautiful little accident because it turns into a 3200 base XP game, which is not too bad at all. So the Friesland. It has smoke and sonar, so pushing in and contesting caps is quite alright, but it's not as concealed as other destroyers, so you have to be careful when doing this. If it was just an Udaloy, I already have the sonar going and the smoke, and oh crap, there's another Friesland. So we're in a bit, a bit of a pickle here. Um, the Friesland, while it has a big HP pool, you can see how much health we're already at. 2,900 left. <laughs> so yeah, I'm already thinking about, oh, what ship will I play next while this one's back in the port? But the Udaloy, we have him caught in sonar, and there is nothing he can do here. The sonar reaches out to 4.4 kilometers, and if you're pretty familiar with German destroyers and how to play them, and you watched maybe my Lo Yang video, you know that the sonar smoke trap can be pretty insane. So, back to the inspirations. Without Billy Sims on here, we would already be dead. So I think that should be the number one pick, trying to improve the survivability. However, Mordoff, I'm not convinced that he's really even worth it. He's almost max level, but he only brings the reload down about a tenth of a second from 1.5 seconds to 1.4. I mean, is that really enough to make a difference? Eh. Now, Eric Bay, that would be another one you can consider. On this setup, if I had put Eric Bay on here, it would have brought the concealment from 5.6 to 5.4. That's maybe a little more useful than Vincent Mordoff, but I'm here to say there are probably some other things that you can do. Using maybe Blue Fiora, which buffs the speed up to about 38.4 knots, or 41 knots with a speed boost, or even Vian to increase dispersions could allow you to be more of an open water gunboat. That is what this thing suffers from. You have good American smoke screens and that's great, but it makes you heavily reliant on your teammates for spotting. I think the carry potential for this boat is not there. If it came down to uh, picking the Friesland or the Lo Yang for a ranked match, I'm gonna go with the Lo Yang. It's more balanced and uh, it, it gives you more tools in certain situations. The Frieslands, you, we've, we've already seen its bag of tricks. Sure, insane DPM with these fast firing guns um, and the sonar, yes, but other than that, you don't have a lot of tools if you're on your own. If this Odin was only facing me, first off, he could kill me in one salvo um, without my teammates spotting for him, or if he bow tanked me, I would have a lot less opportunity to do damage to him. So, those are reasons that I think 
setting it up to be better at open water gunboating, either with speed or dispersion, could help you with these handicaps and maybe make you a little more well-rounded. So also important to note here, if you do not yet have Yerzy Swirsky, you will get him with this ship as the sole pan-European commander in the game. That is the same for Lo Yang, you will get the Asian Dewey, Mr. Ding. So the Friesland. It doesn't have torpedoes, which really handicaps you when facing ships like battleships. However, it boasts the highest gun DPM in the game as of now. And there's no doubt about it, that's fun. <laughs> this ship is so fun in the right situations. Um, and even though Le Yang would be my ranked pick, this ship would be my pick just to go out and have fun in with the division or by yourself. Maybe with the division it would be better though. But I can't remember the last time I was playing a new ship in this game and I just spontaneously started smiling. Well, that happened. The, the stupid amount of shells that you can put in the air will just give you a warm and fuzzy feeling all over, and you can just imagine how miserable you're making that bow-in battleship captain feel as they sit there and get a face full of golden showers. So, like we mentioned, American smoke lasts for about two minutes, and of course the German, German sonar. HP pool's pretty good at 20,000, and uh, honestly, that's Friesland in a nutshell, guys. You, you have to be careful. Battleships and cruisers, they're not going to respect you sometimes. They, they have no deterrent when pushing into you. So if you're smoking up and you're shelling the heck out of them, they know you don't have torpedoes, so they, they probably won't hesitate to push into you. So if you're pretty familiar with playing American gunboats or British ships, I think these are the same guns found on the British destroyers like the Jervis and Lightning. They're 120 millimeters and they have some pretty low shell velocity, so they fly way up in the air and they take a long time to reach their target. It looks like here about 8.5 seconds for 10 kilometers. You get used to it after a while, just like playing the Atlanta, and once you kind of dial in what you're doing, it doesn't really bother you that much. Speaking of that comparison, at the tier, I think Fletcher would be a good comparison. Fletcher has one more gun, but also has an insanely fast reload. But where Friesland edges out the Fletcher and is a little bit better is the fire chance. The Fletcher has a 5% fire chance and the Friesland has an 8% fire chance. So you are going to be setting a lot of fires and making lots of battleship captains nice and toasty. You can imagine 1.5 second reload with an 8% fire chance. Um, yes, you will rack up the fires pretty, pretty quickly. So the Friesland, one other thing to talk about that is fantastic about this ship is its awesome anti-aircraft capabilities. I think the game has it rated at, let's look really quickly, AA Defense 83. So this should be about the best anti-aircraft destroyer currently in the game, and it might give aircraft carrier captains a pause when focusing you or coming to attack you, as they could risk losing quite a few planes. And again, playing with teammates will just maximize your anti-aircraft bubble and help you stay alive longer. Well, that is really going to wrap it up for, you know, what I have to say about the Friesland. I would say take your time watching YouTube videos to make your choice between this ship and the Lo Yang. Ultimately, guys, at this point, I think I'm going to pick the Friesland just for the fun factor and having a really unique ship. Lo Yang's fun, competitive, it's awesome, but the Friesland made me smile. <laughs> and I work in healthcare management, and I, I just don't smile very often. So, uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Comment down below what your ultimate decision is going to be. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. All right.